Good morning and welcome in this glorious morning. The Bible says that this is the day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Today is, is Resurrection Sunday, it's Easter morn. And this morning we had a wonderful sunrise service. Isaac gave a wonderful message. We had a, a great time together as we served Holy Communion and shared that great blessed good news that Jesus Christ is alive. Today I wanted to read a passage of scripture. This is a familiar passage of the resurrection. It comes out of Matthew's gospel, the 28th chapter beginning with verse one. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. There was a violent earthquake and an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. <laughs> he is not here, he is risen, hallelujah. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, he is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him now, I have told you. So the women, women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell the disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him. They touched his feet and worshiped him. And then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father, what a glorious day and a glorious morning. And I pray, Lord, that <clears throat> you would send the Holy Spirit <clears throat> to anoint the hearing, the preaching of your word. And I pray, Lord, that you would encourage us this morning. Lord, I know that there's many who who are within the sound of, of my voice, who are watching this this morning, Lord, are going through hard and difficult times. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that uh, uh, you would send the Holy Spirit to encourage them, and that, Lord, through your word today, uh, Lord, you would show us the truth of the reality of the resurrected Christ and what a difference it can make in our lives. I ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. One of the more moving and insightful stories that came out of the Nazi concentration camps in Europe concerned a musician by the name of Alma Muller, who was the niece of Gustav Muller, who was a great Jewish composer and conductor in his time. In July of 1943, Alma was arrested and she was sent to Auschwitz. Uh, when she arrived there, she was assigned to the women's orchestra because of her talent. And because of the great gift that she had, she soon became its leader, just a young, young woman. As the orchestra uh, members were kept alive so long as they were useful musicians. So Alma was ordered to gather together an orchestra to, to play for the Nazi officers and the top brass. They were expected to play in some of the most inhumane conditions at all hours of the day and night and, <clears throat> and in extreme weather. The guards and the overseers often love music and they gain some kind of perverse pleasure in being serenaded by the prisoners that they held captive in their hands. Alma took her task seriously and she transformed this ragtag group of musicians into a high level professional sounding orchestra and they were wonderful. And in the process, she was able to save many lives of many talented Jewish musicians who were ready to be killed. It's an amazing story. Alma described her bizarre experience of playing beautiful music to some of the most wicked people that had ever lived. She described that they were made to play music when train loads of families, Jewish families came in. <clears throat> what they thought was coming into a new homeland, <clears throat> what was in reality uh, coming in for the horrors 
of the gas chambers. She shared how she wished that she could just smash the, to pieces the, the valuable instruments that she held in her hands. But what I remember most about her life story was a quote that she said about playing for the Nazis. Listen to this. This is what she said. She said, how can you sing and play when there is no music in your soul? How can you sing and play when there's no music in your soul? Uh, that really is a question on the hearts of many of us today, isn't it? How can we sing and play? How can we worship when there's really no music in our souls? If I, I, I would, if, if, if there were any of you who I, I believe uh, would, could say yes, that could say to this, that in, in the most deepest and private part of our hearts today, I believe that we want to hear a word from the Lord. Uh, I know before me today and people who are watching are people who have been struggling, especially with COVID-19. It's had a, a, a huge uh, dynamic on our lives and our family and our children. Some, uh, it has been life-changing. For others, just more of an inconvenience. But there are people out there, I believe, that want to be better Christians to live a life better than what they're living now. Some of you may be asking even how can you sing and celebrate Easter and worship when there's really no music in our soul? Now think about it. There are those who are afflicted uh, with sickness and disease, many with medical hardships for which the field of medicine really has no cure. They just seem to be treating the symptoms. As we Think about today, there are couples out there today just trying to hold life together. Maybe you and your family is trying to do that. Just trying to figure out a way to make uh, ends meet. Uh, many problems with family and children and marriages are in trouble uh, as well. Some are trying to hold it all together in the midst of broken relationships, in the midst of broken promises. There are people out there that are struggling with inappropriate lifestyles, with morals and addictions. I see it all the time. There are people that are wanting to work but really have no job and really have no hope that things are going to get any better anytime soon. There are people, I know, and a lot of elder people in our congregation that are just trying to hold on, hold it together through retirement. They're realizing now that some uh, have gotten to the age to where they no longer can live independently and having to move into nursing homes and, and uh, to other facilities and sometimes even being separated from family and loved ones. And so this morning, I know that there are people that are struggling, there are people that are hurting. There are people that are asking this morning, is there a word from the Lord? How can I sing and worship and celebrate Easter? When there's no music in my soul, there are people struggling with the power of failure, with disappointments. Many of you have had roadblocks in your life. Many of you have had detours and there's dead end streets. And it seems that no matter where you turn, it seems to be the wrong way and a poor choice. You see, when I read the Bible and what happened to these women and these disciples between the time of the arrest the arrest of Jesus and placing his body <clears throat> into a borrowed tomb, I can understand why anyone would ask or they would ask, how do you believe and how can you sing when there's no music in our heart and soul? We saw Jesus die on a cross. We saw him breathe his last breath. We saw him close his eyes, give up his spirit, and say to the Father, it is finished. We've come to a tomb, not to celebrate a resurrection, but we've come to the tomb to pay our last homage to someone who has died. We've come to finish the, the rites of burial and to anoint his body and to do what should have been done, but he was tastefully taken down from the cross. There's not any hope here. There's not any joy here. There's not a song in their heart. No, see, they're, they're, they come to a tomb not expecting to see a risen Savior, but 
to say their final goodbyes to a dead body. You see, my task today is not to give an academic defense to the question of whether or not the resurrection really happened. You could read far better arguments than I could ever write or I, I could ever preach. No, today I would just like to share some good news that Jesus Christ is alive, that he did raise, uh, rise from the dead. And what a difference the power of that truth can make in your life. Hallelujah. What a glorious promise. Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ has the power to turn your disappointment, to turn your struggles, to turn uh, your, your problems in, into victory. Because he rose from the dead. You know, one of the first great truths of Easter is this. Instead of living as prisoners or living our lives as prisoners of guilt and shame, we can now live as forgiven people of God. Hallelujah. And that's what the cross was all about. Jesus went to the cross as the dear Lamb of God in order to take away our sin. Our sin was placed upon him. And his righteousness was given to us. The Apostle Paul, who writes to the church in Corinth, shared what I believe to be the one of the foundations of the gospel and its power and the difference it made in the lives of those who believe. Paul said this. Paul said, listen, I deliver to you of first importance what I also received, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. You see, Jesus Christ was the only sin offering that could satisfy the justice of God for the sins of the human race. You see, I had a debt I could not pay, and Jesus paid a debt he did not owe. Jesus was the Lamb of God. John the Baptist had it right when he saw it. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is the Lamb of God, and he has the power to take away your sin, to take away my sin, the sins of the world. Oh, I love that great hymn Charles, uh, that Charles Wesley wrote, one of the great hymn writers, expressed this truth when he wrote, <clears throat> He breaks the power of counseled sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood availed for me. I want you to know that the blood of Jesus Christ availed for you. The blood of Jesus Christ covered you. He counseled the power of sin. No longer does sin have dominion over your life. No longer is it a stronghold. It doesn't have to be a stronghold in your life. For the power of sin has been broken through the blood of Jesus Christ. The famous preacher Charles H. Spurgeon once shared these marvelous words which provide great hope for us today. Uh, Spurgeon said, there may be some sins for which a man cannot speak, but there is no sins which the blood of Jesus Christ can't wash away. Easter declares to us that forgiveness is not an idea, but a reality that can be shared with those who place faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Oh, I love that hymn that we sing a lot of times on Communion Sunday. What can wash away my sin? Hallelujah, you know it. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me white as snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of of Jesus. That is a great Easter truth that we celebrate this morning. Because Jesus died on the cross, our sin can be forgiven. And because he rose from the grave, death no longer has dominion over us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's a great Easter truth. Death no longer has victory. 
I love that song again. I just feel like singing this morning. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ever I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Hallelujah. When Jesus came up out of the grave and he rose from the grave, it, he destroyed death's grip and hold upon our life. And we who put our faith in Jesus Christ and his atoning blood can have not only abundant life in this world, but eternal life. Hallelujah. When Jesus rose from the grave, we rose with him. And Paul said in Ephesians that we not only was raised with him, but we're seated with him in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. You see, I have a place. John the Baptist said, let not me, John, the, the, the disciple said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For in the Father's house are many mansions. And he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you shall be also. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going and how can we know the way? <clears throat> and Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, because Jesus rose again and ascended to be with the Father, he's in heaven. He's preparing a place for us. And one day when we breathe our last because of the faith that we have in Jesus Christ, the moment that I cease living in this life, in this reality, the moment that my eyes open in another reality beyond death, Jesus is going to receive me because he has a place for me in heaven. Hallelujah. That's a great gospel truth. That is a great resurrection truth this morning that should transform and change your life. The last great Easter truth is this, that when the risen Christ comes to live in us, hallelujah, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have new life. You know, I don't know any other way to explain it, but if you look at the behavior of the disciples after the death and even after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's like they, they still didn't get it. They still didn't understand. Uh, but on the day of Pentecost, Jesus said, go to Jerusalem and wait, go to an upper room and there and pray and seek God and the the Father is going to send the promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was poured out on these disciples. And it says that they begin to speak in other tongues and people heard the gospel message in their own language. And once the disciples were hiding in fear behind closed doors, now because of the resurrection and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit of God, they go out into a world as, as, as if they had ripped down the exit sign off the day of to call tomorrow. They go out into a future filled with hope. They go out into a future unafraid. They go out and boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is alive. What was the difference? The Holy Spirit, through Jesus' death and resurrection, he said that I'm going to go back to be with the Father, but I'm going to send with you a helper, a comforter, someone that will empower you to live. You see, because of the resurrection, because of this Easter truth, we can have new life. Now, I'm not telling you something that I just read about in the Bible. Now, I'm telling you something that I have experienced myself. Over 36 years ago, I was in a parsonage in Mount Vernon, Alabama. Reverend Ray Kelly was my pastor at the time. And he called me, it was on a Monday morning, and, and asked if I was, I was out of work and, at the time. And uh, they needed some work done at the church, some painting. And he, he said, hey, Riley, would you come over and let me talk with you about this? And there was another pastor there, Pastor David Brunstead. He's gone on to be with the Lord. And David had gone through some of the same struggles that I had gone through in my life. And uh, I, they had set it up. I didn't know, uh, but they had set it up. That it was just me and Ray and David. And we just got to talking about the Lord and David started talking about his life and started asking me 
about my life and I became under conviction. Oh, I could feel the weight of the world upon my shoulders. I felt my sin, but I knew that I wanted to give it to the Lord. And David asked the question, he said, Riley, don't you want to accept Jesus Christ and be forgiven? And I said, yes, sir, I do. Myself and David and Ray got on the floor in that parsonage in a little study and we cried out to God. I cried out to God, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Come into my life and cleanse me and make me whole. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I want direction. I want you to guide me in my life. I made a mess of things, Lord. I want to give my life to you. I place it in your hands. Lord, I'll do whatever you want to do in, for, in my life. And I meant that prayer. And I meant that prayer. And now, 35, 36 years later, I'm still preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and I love it every minute of it. I really do. Why? Because Jesus has transformed and changed my life. And it never would have happened had it not been for his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, and sending of the Holy Spirit. It's transformed and saved my life. I don't know what problems that you're experiencing or going through because of COVID, how it may have devastated your family, or just the stresses and strains of life, of, uh, of trying to work and, and uh, hold a family together. Uh, maybe you're in retirement. You're just trying to figure out uh, how to live out uh, the remainder of your years with as good a health as you can and how to survive and financially get through. I, I, I don't know what problems that you're going through, but I know that there's one who can give you power to overcome, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus took the disaster of the cross and turned it into a glorious victory. A victory not only for himself, but a victory for all humankind. A victory for you and a victory for me. <laughs> you see, I heard about a mansion that is built for me in glory. I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. And I heard about the angels in the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Why? Because Jesus gave me victory through the resurrection of his own life. You see, when the risen Christ comes to live in us through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have new life. We can have new life. Death no longer has a hold upon us. And you can know the powerful forgiveness of sin in your life. Hallelujah. I pray today that you have a blessed Easter, you and your family. And I pray that the, res the resurrect resurrected Christ will come into your life, will come into your family, and will give you today new life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go in peace and may the peace of God go with you. Amen and amen. And enjoy a great Easter evening with your family. We'll see you later.